In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity this morning to reflect with you on this passage from St. John's Gospel. Thomas said to Jesus, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. And more specifically, I'd like to focus with you on Jesus' words, I am the way, which in the Latin translation of scripture is interpreted as ego sum via. This past summer, I drove across Canada by myself in our family Sienna van. Now, it's a long story, but I drove to Vancouver to meet up with Martha and the kids who had flown there for the General Synod. The idea was to rendezvous in Vancouver where the kids and I would spend time in the city and then we would all get into the van and drive across Canada and return home. For the most part, I spent five days traveling westward, all alone, mostly praying, listening to music, journaling, even sitting quietly by the side of the road with an afternoon coffee. And I remember one afternoon being swept up at a rest stop where the prairie fields met a clear blue sky. And how strange it was that a drunken man stumbled out of the fields and onto the dirt road. I thought, oh, you don't see that every day, do you? My journey was, for lack of a better word, a pilgrimage. It was a spiritual journey. Now, Martha says that I dawdle. And this was an exercise in spiritual dawdling. But driving is a form of therapy for me, and so the thought of driving, or the thought of dawdling my way across Canada was, in fact, everything I love. I had converted the van into a one-person living space, complete with a comfortable, self-inflating mattress in the back, and I had a rough estimate of how many clicks I had to cover each day. But apart from that, I had no agenda. There was no hurry. I could breathe deeply. So I stopped at every point of interest along the way. Not only was it good to get out of the van and to stretch the legs, but it was very good to tuck off the Trans-Canadian Highway and enjoy the spectacular vistas, the novel points of interest that enhance a drive. Sights like the Wawa Goose, the north shore of Lake Superior and Banff. No matter where I stopped to stretch my legs or to camp out for the night, I was always close to the Trans-Canadian Highway, and sure enough, the road always rose up to meet me. Eventually, I pulled into downtown Vancouver one day ahead of schedule. Martha was amazed. How'd you end up getting here so soon? I don't know, I said. I just dawdled. During the season of Easter, we dawdle on the road with the risen Jesus. Praying our way through gospel stories that are chock full of meaning and significance like the vistas and the side trips that enhance a very long drive. 
Moreover, we want to arrive at a destination, changed, for having taken the journey with the risen Jesus. Easter is the church's season of mystagogy. Now, mystagogy is a word that roughly translates as to living into the mystery. And so, in this season of Easter, the Christian is invited to live into, to lean into, to repose and to rest upon the mysteries of faith, to lean into the Eucharist, to live into the Scriptures. We want to arrive at our destination changed, changed for having taken the journey with Jesus. In last week's Gospel, Jesus called himself the Gate and the Good Shepherd. In today's Gospel, Jesus calls himself Via, Way, or more specifically, the road. I am the road. I am the way. So maybe it should cause us to wonder what sort of life is the Christian life if the Christian God is revealing himself as via the road. How do I lean into that image? Now, the astute Christian might recognize that the analogy of a road is not insignificant to that question. How will I model my life after that of the risen Jesus? Roads are spiritually significant after all, and Jesus uses this image today to reveal something about his life to us. I am the road. I am the way. Here are a few recent examples. In the Palm Sunday liturgy, we are reminded of Jesus, who enters into the city of Jerusalem on a road strewn with branches. I am the road. I am the way. In the Passion of Good Friday, we recall the day that Jesus carried his cross through the streets of Jerusalem, the Via Crucis, the way, the road of the cross. I am the road, I am the way. Holy Saturday, we read our way through stories of roadways and of passages. Remember the story of Israel's exodus from Egypt. When a pillar of fire went before them and led them through the night. A pillar of cloud went before them and led them through the day. Holy Saturday, and yet another Passover story. Mary arrives at the tomb, finds it empty, and receives some very good news. He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. I am the road. I am the way. And who could forget the gospel reading for the third Sunday of Easter? Two of the disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus when, as scripture says, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. An event so saturated in meaning, so rich in significance, that the disciples are overwhelmed. They can't even recognize their friend until he breaks the bread with them and they declare, were not our hearts burning within us as he walked with us on the road? I am the road. 
I am the way. Let's return to this image. I am the way, road, ego sum via. If Jesus is the road, then we, his people, if Jesus is the way, if he is the via, then we are the aviators. We are those people who are travelers and pilgrims on a road that is Jesus. I know it's not an elaborate analogy. In fact, it's surprisingly simple and quite common. Travelers on a road. And maybe that sounds too pithy to offer any real spiritual insight. But then again, have you ever noticed in life how the road always goes before you? Sometimes it just vanishes into a horizon, but the horizon itself is always there. And guess what? You'll never arrive at the edge of the horizon. It just keeps opening up. It opens up to truth, opens up to goodness, opens up to beauty. Imagine a road that disappears into a horizon that just keeps opening up. And the road keeps rising before us. Not so pithy anymore. We will never arrive at the end of truth. Because the nature of truth is thus. The more knowledge we acquire, the more it opens up the horizon of unknowing. The quest for truth reminds us of how much we don't know. Hence the adage, you don't know what you don't know. We can't achieve perfect goodness because there is no limit on the command to be good. You'll never run out of occasions to give and to receive love. There is no limit placed on the command to be good and to love. The pursuit of goodness reminds us of how much goodness is still lacking in the world and so we respond to the lack by offering goodness in its place. Now, what about beauty? There's no way to exhaust beauty because beauty is experienced as a gift and not as a possession. And as long as life itself is given, beauty is always a possibility. The pursuit of beauty reminds us that beauty cannot be had because it is no thing that can be held in possession. The horizon is always out of reach. If you're a capitalist who measures the quality of life on what can be acquired, well, I'm sorry to say that these words of Jesus are very bad news for you. If you're a Christian and truly believe that the acquisition of things, wealth, power, influence, security, have no ultimate purpose or purpose of fulfillment, well, these words of Jesus are very good news for you. I am the way and the truth and the life. This is the season of mystagogy. This is the season where we are invited to live and to lean into the mystery of faith. To be aviators, pilgrims on the road that is Jesus. COVID-19 has simply given us an opportunity. It has slowed our world down. So don't squander it. Don't miss this opportunity.
to lean into Jesus and to renew your commitment to Christ. Thomas said to Jesus, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we possibly know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way.